Hi guys, Valentina here, ValentinaPetrovaConsulting.com. I'm a life coach, life strategist, and often I hear from my clients the question of how do you build trust in a relationship? The way you build trust in a intimate relationship is pretty much the way you build trust anywhere else. Working relationship, friendship, extended family, you name it. So, with this little video, I attempt to answer that question and give you some resources. Maybe you can go do some research on your own and see where you end up. So, when we first meet each other, we kind of operate under a default trust setting. We don't automatically mistrust people. The world seems to have a built-in trust level. <laughs> and if it's not there, we can't really function. And we know that from people who live in um, uncertain environments like war zones or certain societies where people are made to mistrust each other, like my home country, Bulgaria. When we grew up under communism, anybody could tell on anybody and cause trouble, right? So people were very reserved and jaded. So that's not how things are in most Western societies and definitely not the way things are in um, America. So we meet each other and by default we trust each other until we have evidence to the contrary. If that's the case, don't ever provide evidence to the contrary, meaning don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal, right? But there are other ways in which we subtly erode the trust among each other. And one of those ways is when you don't show up for the people that you say you care about and the people who care about you, you don't show up. They need you. They need you to be their support at some point in their life or at some moment. They require your attention and you don't show up. You may not show up for different reasons. A, you're too preoccupied with your own challenges at the moment or your own environment or your own concerns. B, you're not paying enough attention to them to truly appreciate that they actually need you at this moment. It's not just some kind of a waste of time thing causing you inconvenience. They actually do need you. They need your support. They need to be heard. They need a hug. Whatever it is. You're not paying enough attention to them, so you don't appreciate how much they need you, so you don't consider it important, you go on doing your own business. Or you do know that they need you, you're just uncomfortable with what they need you, and you don't know how to handle the situation, you don't know what to say, you don't know what to do, so you're kind of evasive, avoiding, and you don't show up. Well, the moment will pass, they will get over it, Maybe they'll think, oh, I can't really ask this person anyways. Whatever. In these moments, you lose trust because it's, a, it's almost like you're betraying the person's vulnerability and the person's needs. And even though there may be small moments, over time they add up to a deficient trust bank account. But when you do show up for these moments, then your trust bank account with that person grows. So these are simple things, right? They just take paying attention and being responsive. Some time ago, I watched a talk by Brene Brown and she's mostly known for her vulnerability research, but she's also done some things on trust. And this particular talk was on the anatomy of trust. And I very much liked her way of putting it out. So I'm going to share it with you. She calls it the anatomy of trust. And she uses the acronym BRAVING. In which acronym every letter stands for a certain kind of attitude. B stands for boundaries. You having your own boundaries and you respecting other people's boundaries is a great foundation to build trust. You don't allow your boundaries to be violated and you never, never violate the boundaries of others. You're respectful. 
R stands for reliability, more in the sense of being authentic. So people know what to expect from you. They know who you are. You're not a surprise. You're not an unknown quantity. They can rely on your character. They can rely on your skills. They can rely on your attitude. They can rely on you, period, right? A, accountability. You own your mistakes. We can all make a mistake. It's human. And sometimes we misperceive a situation and we act on that misperception. Sometimes we just misbehave for other reasons. Whenever we make a mistake, we must own it. We must apologize. We must explain ourselves. Sometimes that's required. The other person wants to know, why did you do this? So you give them the background story, where you came from, so they can understand. And then make amends. And then never do it again, right? <laughs> if you keep apologizing and making the same mistake, pretty soon they'll get the point. This is not a mistake. This is a deliberate action. You don't really actually care. You're just apologizing to get over it for the moment. And you'll go ahead and do the same thing later. So that's not okay. V, she calls the vault. The vault is a sacred space. In that space, you and I can have a conversation in a very vulnerable way. We can speak about what's in our hearts, what's challenging us, what concerns us, and we can trust that we are not going to go out there and tell the world about what just happened. In other words, we don't gossip. When you gossip with people, when you take other people's stories too out there in the world, you're sending the message to everybody that's hearing you gossip. That you will treat them the same way. They will not trust you. They will not volunteer their story. They will not tell them what's dear to you. They will not tell you what's dear to their heart. Because the way you gossip about this other person, you're going to gossip about them too. So no, they will protect themselves. So the vault is where, you know, what happens in the vault stays in the vault, period. I, in braving, stays for integrity, I mean, stands <laughs> for integrity. So sometimes you have to make choices that are not convenient. Your comfort versus this person's needs. And... Choosing to help, choosing to be there for this person instead of your own comfort and convenience goes a long way towards building trust. It come, goes together with reliability and integrity. So you show up, you're there, you're paying attention. You're choosing them over your own comfort and convenience. You're signaling to them that they matter. They matter a lot. And you're willing to invest your time and energy and attention in them. Integrity also stands for walking your talk. If you're professing certain values, you better be living by those values. If you're not, people see it. And they automatically discount everything you say. You have lost trust. It doesn't matter how good you make yourself sound. When they see that your actions do not match your words, you're toast. Sorry. <laughs> it's how the world goes. <laughs> and in braving stands for non-judgment. Not judging yourself and not judging others. Not judging yourself. You can make a mistake. You can do something stupid. We all do stupid things. And we do a lot of stupid things sometimes. But a smart person can do a stupid thing. Right? A good person can do a bad thing. For whatever reason. It's different to say, I made a mistake. That's a descriptive statement. Then, I am a bad person. That's a judgmental statement. Saying to yourself, I'm a bad person, you disempower yourself. Saying to yourself, I made a mistake, puts you in an in a urgent action. I better fix it, <laughs> right? So judging yourself is unproductive and disempowering. 
The way you treat yourself, you're going to treat others. So just as much as you're judgmental to yourself, you're likely to be judgmental to others. And do you look at a person and judge them as a bad person or a good person or a terrible person or whatever person? Or do you stick to the facts and give them some space to explain themselves perhaps? So non-judgment goes together with the last letter in the BRAVING acronym, which is G, stands for generosity. Being generous with the interpretations that you allow for other people's actions and attitudes. Being generous, like when somebody says something, take the most generous interpretation of what they're saying, which takes you out of victim state. So instead of hearing something and going, oh my God, I can't believe this person said this, they hurt my feelings. Be generous with, with the interpretation. Like, okay, I'm going to allow that they're coming from a good place and they mean well, maybe they didn't express themselves well. And I'm going to ask what they really meant by what they said. So being inquisitive, inquiring, questioning, right? That's what happens when you're generous with other people's interpretation. When you're judgmental and automatically decide that you know exactly how things are, you close the door towards learning. They cannot explain themselves. Maybe sometimes through your questioning you find out they really meant exactly what you thought originally, right? Okay, that's fine. You have verified the information and then based on that you can take the right course of action, right? But if you don't, then you're going to be operating under assumptions. And if your assumptions are not very generous, you're going to cause yourself suffering and maybe do things that are not exactly what you should be doing and perpetuating the negativity. So BRAVING. BRAVING is an acronym that Brene Brown put out to decipher the components of trust. Maybe that's helpful to you to think about it. Another thing to think about is losing trust takes a second. Regaining it could take years. And it takes hard work. And it takes you, if you're the one that betrayed the trust or you're the one that lost the trust, it takes you being patient, being very upfront, being very responsive and very available for the other person so that over time they can get over it. It's just how it is. You can't argue with it. You can't tell the other person, get over it. I've changed now. We already talked about it once or twice. I'm not talking about it again. If they need to ask questions, you're answering them. If they need to hear you say certain things, a hundred times you're doing it if that relationship is important to you. So the rebuilding work of trust is difficult and it, it, it requires patience and diligence and dedication, which is why most people don't do it. When there is a big event that causes the erosion of trust, people split up. They move on, they go to other places, they're embarrassed of themselves or they don't want to deal with the repair work. They don't want to be in a position to be accountable, extra accountable. To get phone calls, text messages, whatever it takes for the other person to feel secure. So people just split up. And I can see that, but whoever you are, and wherever you go, there you are. So in your next relationship, who are you going to be? How are you going to steward that trust? If you're just running out from the responsibility, like you did in the first relationship, you're likely to do the same in the next relationship. So sooner or later, you will end up right where you left off. So trust is a big one. We can't function well when we don't have trust. We need it for thriving, not just for surviving. So hopefully this talk was helpful to you. 
If you have ideas for other topics you want me to discuss, shoot it down in the comments. This is a YouTube video, so you can subscribe to my channel, that big red button down below, and then you'll get the next videos as they come up, and you can comment in the comment section and let me know what you're curious about, what you want me to cover, and I would love to. You can go to my website, valentinapetrovaconsulting.com, and put your name on my newsletter, my email list, and I send little things with information about what I'm doing and where I am and useful stuff, <laughs> links to videos like this one. <laughs> Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys and thank you for joining me for this video. Have yourself a wonderful day and steward the relationships you already have. ValentinaPetrovaConsulting.com and I'll see you next time.